Hello and welcome to another video from Kenson Kerman. In this video we'll be carrying on from the previous video where we had the UFO interceptor. This time we're actually going to build a UFO. So we start off with a few of the basic parts for building a UFO, including a fuel tank because we will be having engines later. Um, we've got the battery pack, we just merged that into the, uh, was it the reaction wheel, just to try and keep this nice and compact. The winglets are uh, going to have a little reflective panel on the outer edge. Um, you sort of get the idea in a minute when this one's sort of done. Uh, and then there'll be multiple winglets around the UFO, um, which will become a bit more of us a bit later. And I'm just sort of trying to fill the gap to the top. And there you see lots of uh, winglets. I couldn't get the amount or the spacing that I wanted, either too many or too few, too few. So I thought I'd try and make it a bit smaller. And they seem to space quite well. And although the actual UFO didn't have lights as such, I thought they would look better. Uh, there's, a, there's a bright, shiny patch where the lights are on the other UFOs. Um, but I thought it would give quite a good effect, especially at night. And so I've added a control wheel underneath, which I've not yet pushed up into the body. And we're working on the dome. Um, I do end up changing this later, but uh, I think that's looking quite good for now. So obviously we need an engine, so we just stick one on and let's go and see if it works. Yeah, that's got enough power to lift it. Only just enough power though, I'll have to be careful with that, although it is meant to be on the MUN. So now we're just pushing the engine up into the body to try and hide it and let's see if that works. Oh, well, we're not going anywhere and it's blowing up. Okay, right, that was not sticking out far enough then, so let's pop back to the vehicle assembly building and just move that down a bit. It was tricky to find, so I had to take it out and then put it back on again. So we're trying it again and, well, it obviously hasn't taken off. Oh, yeah, and the temperature's starting to build and we're not going anywhere, so it's still not sticking out far enough. So we just move it a little bit further out. Let's give that a try. Yeah, that's working. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, but we seem to have fairly decent control. Um, although it's burning through the fuel, so it's time for the uh, quick fuel cheat. And then back to well, testing, I suppose. It does uh, hover fairly well, and if I use the yaw controls, it will spin, which is what I wanted. But with the SAS on, it, uh, it it's trying not to spin, so it kills the spin off pretty quick. See, it's hovering lovely there, look. flickery effect of the lights spinning round. Yeah, I think that'll look pretty good in the dark or at night time. The only drawback though is when it's spinning you can't control the direction. So at the moment I'm just feathering the thrust to manage the hover. Now we've stopped, now we've got the fuel sheet on, we've stopped using fuel so the weight should stay consistent which should make it a bit easier. And now we've got a slight uh, lean on to one s in one direction, so uh, trying to work out which way is which on the controls and trying to get it pointed up. And no, no, not that one. No, not that one either. Oh, that's too late. <laughs> uh, no, it turned out to be quite strong. Well, the core part of it, I suppose. Mm, 
Right then, we're back on the launch pad and let's have another go. See if we can actually fly it where we want it to go. So we'll get a bit of altitude first in case things go wrong. There we are, having a little spin while we're climbing. going in. Well eventually uh, we headed out back towards the vehicle assembly building and I thought I'd try and land on the helipads. So it was all very slow and very cautious, which is why I cut most of it out of the video. Um, Too much thrust. Let's try and get it spinning while we land. Oh, not enough thrust, more thrust. Oh, oh it survived. It might not have an engine now, but the rest of it survived. So it's back to the assembly building where we're just going to stick a gantry on the UFO so we can stick it up in the air on the launch pad. Like that. And then we go back to the, uh, where did I do this, uh, the space plane hangar. And we launch the UFO interceptor. Whoa, careful. I think I drained some fuel out of some of the tanks. I don't think there was enough weight at the front for that bit. So uh, I might address that later. Get a bit of speed up and a bit of altitude and test fire the rocket and it goes all over the place and eventually crashes into the sea. So try again and turn off the fuel cheat this time so the rocket will only burn for a short time. And, well, it still flies off in a weird direction. Uh, I think it's going to be closer to hitting me. So we'll turn the fuel cheat back on because we haven't got much fuel. And I assume that turns the fuel back on for the um, uh, for the rocket as well. And uh, I just thought I'd show you what happens when you um, turn too quickly in this. It basically falls out of the sky. So we're just trying to get the nose up, trying to get all the thrust pointing upwards and let me change my mind and try and get a bit of airspeed but we're getting close to the ground so thrust up again oh, and then we remember we've got vertical lift thrusters and they save the day and pull us out of the death dive So we've launched the interceptor again, so it's fully armed with its one missile. And we're just trying to turn around, not too quickly this time, and get it pointing back at the Kerbal Space Center. Now I've given myself quite a bit of distance to get this, whoa, steady. Oh no. Uh, no, we've um, departed from controlled flight again. Panic, panic. Get it the right way up, then you can use the thrusters. Oh, let's get rid of the rocket. That might make it a bit lighter. Oh, too late. <laughs> and, yeah, right. Let's, um, let's launch that again, then. Okay, so we're lined up on the Kerbal Space Center's invading UFO. You can see from the little green target, we clicked on it and it said it was the target. And then I'm using the control node to aim at the target, but yeah, the rocket's got its own idea. Well, it nearly hit me then. Hmm. Oh, well, we're getting a bit close to the ground. Blup, blup. As we 
fly past, we can see the UFO still down there on the launch pad. Obviously we missed it. But there is one final option for taking out the UFO before they invade the Kerbal Space Center. The ultimate sacrifice. Oh, we missed. Oh, a bit blew up the whole launch pad. And I think it's taken out the UFO. Yeah, we've been saved from a Kerbal invasion. Alright, let's modify this torpedo rocket thing then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick a stay putnik in the front of it. It's not easy to say. Let's see if that'll give you enough guidance control to aim at the intended targets. Let's get the UFO interceptor airborne one more time. A bit more of a controlled takeoff this time. Again, I'm giving myself a fair bit of distance to turn around and get it lined up. And it doesn't happen very quickly, so I've speeded it up. Alright, so I'll set the um, Stay Putnik as the control point. Now I'm setting the target and using the target node, which points me at the target. There's me trying to work out how to fly it. So I'm going to launch the missile and switch to it straight away. Oh, that worked well. And no, it's not flying straight. Whoa, there goes the interceptor. Quick change back to that then. Um, yeah, that's right. We're not too close to the ground. But it was definitely heading that way. Yeah, I don't know where the missile went, but um, no, the UFO is still on the launch pad. So we'll have to try the ultimate sacrifice one more time. Once we've been able to fuel cheat to have enough fuel to do it. So here we go. Right, we're on target. We're lined up. Let's have a cockpit view mode on this one. Coming in, looking good. Are we going to hit it? We oh no! Oh. <laughs> no, we missed. The UFO survives this time. Right, let's get the UFO into a MUN orbit. Doing it the easy way, obviously. There we go, and get the controls on and yeah, orientate it. Yeah, doesn't that look nice? Right, so we've got the uh, UFO in orbit, so let's go back and get an interceptor. And then the magic teleporter to the MUN. There we go. Let's get it level. And where are we? Let's get it pointing in the right direction. Yep, there's the UFO. 29 kilometers ahead. That seems a long way, considering the uh, previous results. Swap cameras to the uh, missile as soon as I've launched it. Uh, get my fingers in the right order. Oh yeah, got to set the control point to stay Putnik, and yep, yeah, we're still on target. So here we go. 
Uh, well, at least it flies straight when there's no atmosphere. And we're definitely closing in on the UFO. Uh, I'm going to turn the fuel sheet off, but I think I'm already too late. Yeah, no, we've shot past it already. Now I need the fuel sheet back on again, right? Let's see if we can get it on the second pass. Uh, we're dropping quite a lot, so our angle's going to increase soon. Oh, yeah, there it goes. No, we went way underneath it. <laughs> uh, it's a yo yo missile. I think that's what I'll call it. Go backwards and forwards. Will it get it this time? No. I think we could probably play this game all day and still not hit the thing. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, there it goes. Just shot past. It's going on these trajectories, I can't work them out. Let's turn the fuel sheet off, let it crash. So there's me, right let's change back to that and yep we're aboard the interceptor and we've still got the UFO ahead of us and we've failed to destroy it again. That's all for this video so I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to check back soon because we're going to be doing more work with the interceptor and the UFO. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>